Uh, President Joe Biden is dealing with some more bad news on the economic front. Major oil producing countries led by Saudi Arabia and Russia are slashing the amount of oil they deliver to the global economy. In short, that could mean shelling out more dough at the gas pump. White House correspondent Owen Jensen reports. Owen. Hi, Tracy, and good evening to you. Before President Joe Biden flew off to New York today for a tour of IBM, he was asked about the oil production cut by OPEC Plus, 2 million barrels a day starting in November, which incidentally is when the midterm elections arrive. Walking towards Marine One, President Joe Biden stops briefly to take a few questions from reporters. And when asked what his reaction is to the move by OPEC Plus, disappointment, and uh, we're looking at what alternatives we may have. And whether he regretted his earlier trip to Saudi Arabia. The, the trip was not essentially for oil. The trip was about the Middle East and about Israel and, and rationalization of positions. But it is a disappointment, and it says that there are problems. American drivers right now are paying, according to the latest AAA average, 3.86 a gallon, down from this past summer's record soaring highs, but as of late, back on the rise. And with inflation still eating into paychecks, the Republican National Committee tweets, unleash American energy. And the quantum computing is going to revolutionize it. Absolutely. Yes. Meanwhile, at the IBM facility in Poughkeepsie, New York, the president celebrates a new $20 billion investment by the company, which the White House says will bolster research and development and manufacturing of semiconductors, mainframe technology, artificial intelligence, and quantum computing. And it's here now where the Hudson Valley could become the epicenter of the future of quantum computing, the most advanced and fastest computing ever, ever seen in the world. Separately, after a federal appeals court issued a ruling that leaves the future of Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, up in the air, last night the president released a statement saying he's disappointed, blamed mega-Republican officials, and added, And while we will use the tools we have to allow dreamers to live and work in the only country they know as home, it is long past time for Congress to pass permanent protections for dreamers, including a pathway to citizenship. Also today, on a busy news day, we just learned this afternoon President Biden is pardoning thousands of Americans convicted of simple possession of marijuana under federal law. He said in a statement this afternoon, quote, no one should be in jail just for using or possessing marijuana, end quote. At the White House, Owen Jensen, EWTN News Nightly.